Welcome to Statics. Constraints and Statical Determinacy In this course, we are limited to working with bodies and structures that are statically determinate. A structure is statically determinate if we can find all its reactive forces caused by the constraints using the equations of equilibrium. We can also use what we know about springs and pulleys, but ultimately we are limited in the number of unknowns that can exist in a given problem. For example, in two-dimensional problems, we have three independent equations of equilibrium that we can apply. That means, for statically determinate problems, we are limited to a maximum of just three unknowns in a problem. For three-dimensional problems, the number of independent equations of equilibrium increases to six so we are limited to a maximum of six unknowns for statically determinate problems. We will only consider statically determinate problems in this course. So now let's talk about statically indeterminate bodies and structures. Statically indeterminate means that there are more unknowns than there are equations of equilibrium. Here's an example. This beam is supported by pins on both ends. Here's a free body diagram. Note that there are four unknown reaction forces, so it is statically indeterminate. The horizontal component of force 1 will be balanced by both AX and DX reactions. Do both supports split the load 50-50? Does AX take all of it since it is closer? The real answer is somewhat complicated. You may learn how to solve idealized, statically indeterminate problems in future classes. The techniques for solving these problems incorporate structural deformations and member material and cross-section properties. Statically indeterminate problems are not considered in this course. Now that we have statically indeterminate structures defined, we can define redundant constraints. A structure that has redundant constraints means it has more supports than necessary to hold the body in equilibrium. In other words, a body with redundant constraints is statically indeterminate. From our previous example, the beam has one redundant constraint, either AX or DX. If we remove one of them, the structure will still be in static equilibrium. Last, let's discuss structures with improper constraints. A structure or body is said to be improperly constrained if it may become unstable under an applied load. Note that it is possible for the number of unknown reactions on a structure to be equal to the number of equilibrium equations and still be improperly constrained. Let's look at a couple of examples. In this first example, a rod subjected to its own weight is supported by two cables, one at A and one at B. In this loading condition, the bar is stable, but if a force F were applied, the body would become unstable. So this rod is improperly constrained. Bodies with reactive forces that are all parallel are improperly constrained. In the second example, a plate subjected to its own self-weight is supported by two ball and socket joints. A free body diagram shows that there are six reactive forces acting on the plate, suggesting that it is statically determinate. However, if a single additional force were applied towards the free corners of the plate, it would cause rotation and become unstable. A rule is that if the lines of action of all the reactive forces intersect a common axis, shown here, then the body is improperly constrained.